Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a highly requested video which is how to make your leopard gecko love you or at least how to bond with your leopard gecko. Now I can't read their minds and all I can tell you is what I've always done uh, for over a decade now and it's always worked for me. Just remember when doing this, be patient, be consistent, and don't take things too personal if they don't go right straight away. Anyway, without further ado, let's go through my five top tips. So the first tip is have a sound, okay? This sounds weird, but you can actually start this as soon as you get your gecko, no matter how old it is. I actually do this with all of my pets. So basically, the sound I always make is Okay. Now over a period of time, I believe they associate the sound with you, and if they've had positive experiences with you, they also associate it with good things. It can also help to calm them down in stressful situations. For example, there's a video I did quite a while back where I accidentally spooked Minnie, and she starts slowly wagging her tail, and by just doing like and softly saying her name, she actually just calms down and lowers her tail. Now I know this may sound a little bit silly, but I believe over time it leads to them recognizing and reacting to you. It allows stressful situations to be resolved quicker. And overall, it's a very easy way to bond with your gecko. The second tip is to do with feeding. Now it can be very easy to just dump feed insects into their tank and walk away, but I truly believe one of the biggest bonding opportunity comes with feeding. Food both physically and mentally stimulates geckos. It's definitely a positive, exciting experience. And if you're there with them during this, not only will that build trust, but once again, it will associate you with positive things. So if you have a baby gecko, for example, they need to be fed every day. So this is a fantastic opportunity to fast track the bonding between you two. Not only that, but you also kind of figure out your gecko's feeding habits. Uh, for example, Diego gets way too excited when he sees a load of mealworms. He might catch one or two, but he gives up very quickly. However, if I give him a mealworm one at a time, he'll eat them all. So not only will you learn about your gecko and its feeding habits, but you'll also bond. The third tip is avoid unnecessary stress. Now the odd spook now and again is bound to happen, even with the tamest of geckos, and most of the time this won't affect them in the long run. So this tip is mainly to focus on reducing any chances of unnecessary stress that can lead to your gecko not trusting you or not wanting to even come out of its tank. For example, do not get your gecko out with other reptiles or any other pets. I know you may trust your cat or dog, but at the end of the day, a gecko is a predator to insects, but in the wild it would definitely be predated on by larger animals, so surrounding it by other pets could easily cause stress. Other things that cause unnecessary stress include poor heating, poor husbandry, not enough hides, feeder insects being left in the tank too long, suddenly picking your gecko up without any warning at all, sudden loud noises, or sudden movements. Next tip is handle your gecko correctly. Now I've talked about this a lot in my handling and taming videos and by this point I'm assuming that you've already tamed your gecko and really you just want to properly bond with them. If not, if you are still learning how to tame them or handle them, I have done videos on that and I will put that in the description down below. So I suggest going check them out first and then come back to this. Now regular handling can really help with bonding. Just make sure you do it properly. Don't handle them roughly and make sure the experiences are always positive. Also, do not leave them unsupervised with someone who has no experience with handling geckos. And one thing I have noticed is some people who probably own bigger lizards or snakes and they're more used to handling them can sometimes handle leopard geckos a little rough. And I see this on Brian's channel. No hate to him at all because I know he loves his reptiles and it's most probably because he is used to handling bigger reptiles a lot more and because the leopard geckos he owns probably don't get handled as much as your regular pet leopard gecko because he has tons um but one thing i do notice is he can hold them quite firmly and this might be because they might wriggle and squirm and he doesn't want them to drop and that's fair enough but i don't think it's a great 
example of how you should be regularly handling your geckos. You really don't have to restrain them like that. They're just little leopard geckos. It is best to have an open hand, doing one hand in front of the other. So, um, yeah, try that. Also, um, I don't know if this is just my geckos. Maybe it is. But they hate being stroked along their back. I never do it. It's, I, I just imagine them literally cringing like this. Like, that is probably my face when I see someone stroke my gecko along its back. I don't know why. It's just their back goes up and I, they just don't seem to like it. Um, yours might yours might like it. I prefer to stroke them under their chin and on their head, but just not along their back. That's just a big no-no in this house. And my final tip is have a bit of a schedule. Now this doesn't have to be anything super strict, but it's good to respect that leopard geckos need to sleep during the day. Don't take them out and handle them or feed them during this time. I completely leave my geckos in a quiet room throughout the day where they'll sleep very peacefully. Around dawn and dusk are their peak hours as they're crepuscular. However, if you're going to feed or handle them, aim for you know, the evening time. That, that's what I've always done. That seems to work best. Um, this way, I believe they'll get used to a schedule. They may even expect to come out at certain times, which I do notice that sometimes. And I think in the long run, it leads to a happier gecko. Just imagine if you were randomly picking your gecko up all hours of the day when they're trying to sleep. I just feel like they'll always be on edge. And with my geckos, they just seem very settled. And I think that's a great way of bonding and just having them be relaxed around you but yeah um i hope this video has helped every gecko is different and everyone's experience may vary all i can do is tell you what i've done for over a decade now and as you can see from my geckos they're pretty chill uh <laughs> i sounded so posh they're pretty chill anyway <laughs> um if you want to see more regular updates on my geckos, you can always follow me on Instagram. I also have a Facebook, YouNow and Patreon, always in the description down below. Also, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. But thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye.